Hello, my name is Josh Levine with Palo Alto Networks, and I'm a federal sales engineer specialist supporting the Cortex product line. And today I'm going to be giving you a demo on integrating Cortex XOR with the ServiceNow ITSM platform. For this demo, I'm going to be leveraging a developer instance of the ServiceNow platform, which you can sign up for for free at developer.servicenow.com. I'm going to show you how to configure a user and assign the appropriate roles within ServiceNow, and then walk you through configuring the XOR integration to access that ServiceNow instance, as well as performing a test with a validation playbook that I've created. So the components that are required here, obviously I just mentioned the ServiceNow developer instance. Again, the link's here in the slide deck and I will also include these in the YouTube links. And I put a couple of links in here just to, for quick access. All you have to do is just replace your instance name with the name that's given to you when you sign up for a developer instance or whatever your customer's instance name is. And then likewise, the roles at the bottom of this slide are what's required for XSOR to talk to and manage incidents or tickets within the ServiceNow platform. And with that, let's go ahead and hop over to the demo. So as I mentioned previously, I'm gonna be leveraging a developer instance of ServiceNow, which you can sign up for for free at developer.servicenow.com. This gives you access to the entire platform and allows you to test out different applications, different use cases and things like that. Um, one thing to note with these instances is that they do shut down every night. So the first time you log in every morning, it's going to have to wake up that instance. And then it's also got an inactivity monitor. So after a week, it'll send you a notice that your developer instance is about to expire. And if you let it expire, it'll reclaim all the resources and you'll have to reconfigure everything for integration into XOR. But with that, let's begin. So as you can see, I am now logged into my developer instance of ServiceNow, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Start Building. That's going to open up a new page and bring me into the instance. Once that's done, the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to the user section here, because that's what I want to create is an XOR user that's going to be used within the XOR platform to talk to ServiceNow. So I can go under User Administration and then Users. And from here, I want to go ahead and click new and I'm just going to name my user XOR just to keep it simple. I don't have to fill out first name, last name or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. I'm going to go back into the user. And I'm going to click on set password. I can have ServiceNow generate a password for me and I'm going to copy that to clipboard because I'm going to change it so something I can remember go ahead and hit save and one thing to note once you've hit save uncheck the box for password needs reset otherwise you will receive an error as you try to integrate this with XOR once that password needs reset is unchecked click update and now your XOR user has been configured and the password has been set. Once, we, once that is complete, go back into the user one more time and let's go ahead and assign some roles to the user. And as I showed in the slides, there's a handful that we need to assign out of the box. Now you'll need to add or change these depending on how your ServiceNow instance is configured. Like if you have specific table permissions that require a separate role to be assigned. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it fairly basic and I'm going to assign the bare minimum of what we need, which is web service admin and REST API Explorer. I'm also going to add in incident manager because for this, for this demo, all I care about is creating tickets within the platform. So I'm going to assign that permission as well. Hit save. And you can see it added a bunch of different roles down at the bottom of the screen here. Go ahead and click update. And our XOR user is now ready to go. And one additional step I'm going to take for this demo, just because I am going to be creating incidents and I want it to be able to, I want XOR to be able to close incidents automatically without a lot of additional fields being required. I'm going to modify the data policy section of ServiceNow. And I'm specifically going to look for 
a rule that calls for the closed notes and resolution notes to be mandatory when an incident is marked closed. So if I do a search for mandatory close, this is the rule you want right here. Make close info mandatory when resolved or closed. So go ahead and click into that rule. And uncheck active. That way you don't have to fill in those fields when we go to close an incident within XOR. Now this could vary depending on your organization's policies and configurations within ServiceNow, but for a developer instance, this just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So go ahead and click update. And with that, we are ready to go over to XOR and test. But before I do that, I want to have you navigate to the all incidents page. That way you can see the ticket that's going to be created as we test out the XOR integration. So I've navigated over here and I'm going to click on all because by default it has a bunch of filters set. So now I can favorite this page and this will take me directly to this page so I can see new incidents as they're created or updated by the XOR platform. Again, just a little time saver and I will also include this link as part of the URLs that are in the YouTube description. So now I'm over in XOR and I'm going to navigate over to my settings page and I'm going to do a search for my ServiceNow integration. I'm going to go ahead and add an instance and the first thing you're going to want to fill in is the URL. Now this is the beginning portion of the URL for the instance that you created whether it's developer or your specific customer instance name. So this is the portion I want, the HTTPS dev 120665.servicenow.com. Paste that in. I'm going to use our XOR user to connect in. And then I'm going to fill in the password. Now just as a best practice recommendation, I do recommend storing these as a credential object within XOR, which you can see behind the instance configuration screen. But for testing purposes and for the demo, this is pretty it's just easy and straightforward so i'm going to go and hit test test was successful i'll save that i've now got an active instance of service now and with that i'm going to head over to the playground and i'm going to query some information about the xor user we created in service now this information is going to be plugged into the playbook that's going to serve as part of this demo to confirm that service now is working and xor is able to talk to it so with that, I'm going to run the ServiceNow query users command, and I'm going to query specifically for the XOR user. And what I want is that UID that's going to pop up. And this is what I'm going to fill in for the playbook to function. This is going to be who's going to be creating tickets for me in the platform. That way you can see all tickets that have been created by XOR itself. So you have some sort of attribution when an action was taken in ServiceNow. And also for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and pull information on one more user just so I have a username to associate the sample incident that I'm going to create with. So I'll head over to my ServiceNow instance and I'll look at my users page. And in this case, I'm just going to pull one of the demo users that was already put into the platform, able.tutor. So in my XOR instance, I'm going to go ahead and query information about able. And I'm going to copy this UID as well. Now this will be who the tickets created for rather than who the tickets created by. So I'm going to head over to my playbook section for the demo playbook that I've got created. I'm going to edit this and specifically I'm going to fill in the fields for caller ID and then the user. So right now you can see the, the playbooks assigning the ticket to the XOR. Now this can be whoever you want, but I want to fill in the UID for the caller, in this case, Able, and I'm gonna hit OK. The rest of these fields are pretty straightforward. It's just updating the ticket just to make sure all the update functionality works. And then it's closing it out. So now this is where the resolve by comes in. I'm gonna resolve it by XOR. So I'm gonna fill in the XOR UID. And then I'm gonna close the incident within the XOR platform. I'm gonna go ahead and save the playbook. And so with the playbook save, I'm going to go ahead and execute it. And it's going to go through and create a ServiceNow ticket. And it's going to perform a series of updates. So I'm going to give this a refresh. 
so that I can see the new ticket in the ServiceNow platform. You can see it's been created. If I navigate into it, as we watch, you'll start to see some of those updates populate that XOR is going to be automatically adding. So there's updates two and three, and now it's closing the ticket. And this is again why I had that optional step in there of making sure the mandatory fields for resolution and close notes weren't required. Um, just makes it simpler when executing the demo playbook. But with that, you can see the playbook successfully created, updated, and then closed the ticket, and all the steps executed cleanly. And with that, that's all you need for integrating with ServiceNow. So if I navigate back to XOR to the playground, You can see all the available commands for ServiceNow, either by typing exclamation ServiceNow into the CLI or going into the settings page and clicking show commands. So this shows you all the things that are available to be done with the ServiceNow integration. Um, one thing to note, and this is a question I've had a couple of times, in this demo I was using the ServiceNow create ticket function that is done for incidents within the ServiceNow platform. But if you have other types of records in ServiceNow, say for a customer, um, customer success management case, you need to know the appropriate table name and you can use the create record function to actually update that table. You just need the table name and you need to know which fields are required to be updated as you transition between the different incident states. And that concludes this demo, and please let me know if there's additional functionality you would like to see. Thank you.